What's up WordPress nerds? In today's video, we're gonna be going over four different mistakes that you might be making that are making your queries slow in WordPress. Before we get into that, I wanna remind everybody, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. And on top of that, I wanted to shout out WP Rocket. Um, that is my favorite uh, caching plugin for WordPress. It'll do things like minify your uh, CSS and JavaScript. It'll cache your, H, uh, your pages as HTML flat files so you can um, just reserve those and all sorts of good things. If you're interested in a new caching plugin, definitely check out WP Rocket. Their link is in the description. And if you end up purchasing a license, I get a small kickback, but I do quite enjoy that plugin. So I wanted to shout it out. All right, so let's talk about the four fatal mistakes. The first one is that you probably should be doing something about how you're getting your data in WordPress. So if you're like me, you're probably already doing this, but there's a couple things in here that are probably um, mistakes that you are making. So using WP query or get posts is the right thing to do. Um, you probably shouldn't use WPDB unless you need something hyper-specific or something like that. Usually 99% of the time, WP query or get posts will get you exactly what you need. Um, however, uh, WP query automatically runs, I think five queries every time that you run it. So it'll do things like we see here in the first bullet point, it'll calculate the found rows. And so if you do no found rows set to true, that will remove that query of SQL found rows, which is what is used for pagination. So if you're just getting a list of posts that you're doing something with and you don't need to paginate it, do no found rows true, and then that will make your query faster. And it will also prime caches if you are doing something with um, the terms or meta um, on, on your posts themselves. So if you want to set those two to false, that will not prime those caches. So you don't need to, um, it, it will actually make it so your query is faster because it won't actually be doing all that other extra crap. And then on top of that, you could also do um, the fields argument. So if you just need to get like the IDs or the titles or something like that back, instead of everything that's related to the post, that will also make your post faster. So make sure you are removing the things that you don't need and only keeping the things that you do. On top of that, this is something that is from VIP WordPress, which I actually just learned recently, is that you should avoid the post not in argument in uh, when using WP query. So first it would add, if you do use it, um, it adds this and ID not in uh, to that query. And so there's something significant about that. Well, I mean, that already makes it slower, but on top of that, it will um, automatically skip the cache every time that you use that query on a page that it exists on. So for example, the one that they use on VIP WordPress anyways, let's say you have a widget in the sidebar and that's getting every single, it's getting the latest five posts minus the post that you're currently on, right? You don't wanna have a link to the post that you're already on, that would be weird. So what you would normally do is you would do this post not in and then you get the current post ID and you toss that in there. Well, that creates a new cache key for every single time that that um, query is being used. Because if you're on page one, that's going to have a different query than on page two, because that query now has this and not in in here, which generates a different like um, cache key and all that kind of stuff. So automatically you're having to just re you're having to generate, and that's on the third bullet point here, a unique query to cache on every single page that this query exists. So if you have like 100 pages that this thing is running on, well, now you have 100 different page cache uh, queries that are going to be stored in like memcached or Redis or whatever. That is just no good. Like, I mean, why would you don't need that? So what the suggestion is instead of that is instead of using post not in, just get like the latest six posts or something like that. And then in when you're outputting the list of posts, check to see if the post is matches the current post ID. And if it does, just skip it. And then all of a sudden that it work um, is brought into PHP, which we'll talk a little bit more about here in a second, um, which is faster. And also you are only able, you're only um, generating one cache for that query and every single page that uses that widget will have that cache query that it can pull from rather than having to create its own every single time. 
On top of that, let's also avoid meta queries. Meta queries are not indexed in the database and they should represent unique information about that post. So if you're doing meta queries on, on, on your site, avoid it if possible. Obviously there's gonna be edge cases where it's absolutely necessary, but if you can avoid it, you should, because um, just it's not set up in a way to have efficient queries in your database. I've run into this multiple times. Um, one in particular was I was having to query a bunch of different automobiles and I had to check to see if something had expired. And so I was grabbing like the timestamps of out of every single one. It, and so like the query would like crash. Um, so I had to do a bunch of work to get it to not crash. But anyway, I had everything stored in, uh, in meta and I was querying off of that meta and it made things extremely slow. So um, I would avoid that if possible. And if you need to like group items together, if you're getting things like that, it's really tempting just to use ACF, put a drop down or something like that or a checkbox and you know use that as something to tie everything together because ACF is fun and, it's, and, it, and it works really well and it's got an easy API, however, taxonomies are way faster to pull data from. So if you can group things as a taxonomy, you absolutely should and avoid things like ACF and meta wherever possible. And on top of that, this is kind of a general rule that uh, is good to follow is just avoiding complex queries. If you're having to uh, pull in different types of you know, queries and then on top of that, like you're grabbing multiple things from multiple taxonomies and then on top of that, pulling um, things from multiple post meta keys or something like that, that's all of a sudden bringing in like more tables than is probably necessary. And so all of a sudden that query that you've just sent to the server is gonna take a lot longer. Whereas if you can kind of pull down like a giant batch of those files, uh, or those uh, that the, those posts that one query, then you can kind of filter out those things through PHP, which tends to be faster than having that sent up into the database and having it do all of the work. So if you can just bring down kind of like the general bucket of things that you need and just make one simple query, give me all of these posts, and then here in PHP, I will filter out all of the ones that have this in the title or something like that, you know what I mean? So making sure that you are making a very generalized query and filtering out on PHP is also something that will make your queries much faster, more cacheable, etc. So I hope you guys enjoyed those tips. I'm going to leave a link to the slides in the description. If you have any comments, make sure to leave them in the um, down below. I try I read just about every single comment that gets left on my channel. Um, so I will definitely see it. And on top of that, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if not, thumbs down and let me know why. All right, I appreciate you all watching. Thank you for my uh, patrons. We're gonna be doing another video this week, so keep an eye out for that. If you're interested in more advanced tutorials, I have a link to my Patreon in the description. But again, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.